One of the most modern things people are doing nowadays is building media walls. So I've decided to give it a go myself on this wall right here. And as you can see, I've already mounted my TV on the wall and that was really simple to do. I simply bought a wall bracket, screwed it into the wall with four wall plugs and then bolted it to the TV and it's an extendable one which you can turn left and right. These are always good because if you ever need to access your behind the TV at any time, you can always just pull the TV off the wall a bit and get your arms behind there. So I think that's a really cool thing. If you're gonna do one, get one that pulls out from the wall because you'll always be able to access behind the TV with these. I've also stuck some LEDs to the wall behind it because I want it to glow behind the TV. I've also done a line of them around the back of the TV as well just to double up the light on there because I think the more light you've got behind it, the better. You really want that light to ping from behind the TV when it's all finished. But really, they're two things that you should really wait to do until the end. But I've done it back to front because I'm a sort of back to front sort of guy. But I think that uh, we'll be okay. We'll be able to work around it. So we should be okay. So it was out with a pen and paper so I could design exactly what I'm going to be building. So I've done a rough sketch of what I want to do. We want the TV in the middle here, TV. This will be a fireplace, fire, and these are three shelves either side. I want to put down lighters in each one so it glows. And obviously I've got LEDs around the outside of the TV to make that glow. The fireplace has got LEDs in it as well. So just a little rough sketch of what I'm trying to achieve here. Let's see if I can make it look anything like this or perhaps even better than this rubbish drawing so to be able to do this i'm gonna have to go and get myself some materials so it's off to the wholesaler now to grab all the bits and bobs i need well i've got myself a big load of wood i managed to fit it in my car 2.4 lengths of cls this is the stuff i'm going to be using to frame my media wall i've got brand new carpets in here so the first thing i need to do is protect the area so i've got a big dust sheet to put down make sure everything's protected because i don't want this place absolutely filthy you know what i mean so i unfolded my new sheet because this place was going to get dirty a clean job is a happy job right so i've got my timber up here now and these are the tools I need for this job. I've got two levels there, obviously a handsaw to cut the timber. I've got a standing knife and a pencil. A few back, uh, packs of screws. These are for the plasterboard, which I'm gonna be using to actually put over the top of the, the actual frame. Got some raw plugs so I can fix stuff to the wall, the drill bits for it, got some fresh blades. These I've got to pre-drill the timber so I don't split it tape measure, hammer, a couple of drills, and I've also got an SDS drill as well to actually drill the holes in the wall to fix the, the first uprights to it. Once I've done that, that's all the drilling into the actual building I'm gonna have to do. If you stick around to the end, you'll find out exactly how much this media wall has cost me. So I'm gonna stick a level up the wall, see what we're like, because we wanna make sure we're nice and upright. And I tell you what, it's not too bad. We've got a little gap in the middle of the level there, but top to bottom, yeah, we're up right there. We're up right there. So there's just a little, small, little bow inwards on the wall there, but that shouldn't be a problem. We'll just work the fixings out and we'll get it right in so it's nice and tight. And then I can adjust my noggin size to make sure when I do my front panel one, we're absolutely upright. So it's time to measure, mark and cut my first timber so I can build my first stud. Right, so now I've marked out the wall where things are gonna go. Forget this line, I put it in the wrong place. But we've got a shelf going in here. This is another stud coming down here to match this one. We'll pair them. We'll have a stud here and a stud here. That'll give us a nice edge around this TV. And our shelves will go in here. And we'll have a panel, another shelf, a panel, and another shelf. We've got even distance there, 250 mil from there, 250 mil from there to the coving. I'm keeping the coving gap there because I want to put a light along the top as well so it illuminates the ceiling. So I think that'll be a nice feature on it. I haven't seen that on, on any other um, media walls that I've seen on the internet or anything. So we'll have an up layer on that as well and that'll look really cool. So there's the three shelves. Also, I've marked out where the fireplace is going. That's going in the middle here. There's the center of my wall. 
and the fireplace goes to here right the way to there and it is just under the sides of the TV so it's going to look pretty cool it's going to look quite symmetrical I'm going to mark out that side now as well and then I can continue making the frame but now I've got a plan on the wall which is something to follow I think that's important because I started doing this without putting anything on the wall and didn't have any lines to go to so it's a bit guesswork but now I've actually planned it out measured it out and got everything where I want it to be equal spaces that gives you the ideal almost like a drawing to follow so that's pretty crucial I think in this is to have something to actually follow on the wall and then you know where your timber's going so we're getting quite a bit of the frame up now but I'm out of timber so I've got to nip back to the wholesalers and go and get myself another bundle of timber. I've used 20 lengths so far, I'm going to go and get another 20, hopefully that'll be somewhere near. Right so I'm back now with a load more timber and now I'm tackling the bit where the fireplace is going to sit. I've put one across there at the moment but I'm going to put three across here because it needs to be extra strong if it's going to carry the weight of that fireplace so I'm going to triple it up then that way it'll stay nice and strong and the fireplace won't drop or anything that'll be absolutely perfect so one along the front to fill in this gap and then one along the back as well and that'll be the triple there we go there's the fireplace sat on there so now what I'll be doing is I'll be putting the timbers across the top and then well the ones down the side first and then sandwich it in with the ones around the top and then we've got some lugs on the side which sort of clip onto the back so once you put the timber down you then bend these clips round and screw them in from the rear so that's what we'll be doing with that and then that'll be fixed in there perfect but I've got to do some cladding first so we might be able, I might not put the lugs across just yet let's see how we get on um, because I might have to pull it forward just to nuts, just to uh, accommodate the the boarding, but we'll see in a minute. So it was on with the stud work, getting making sure everything was level, screwing it in one end, then pushing the other end in, making sure she's absolutely level as possible, and screwing that one in as well with the impact driver. Yep perfect then once I knew it was perfect in with a second screw so that's all the framework done now so the next thing I need to do is put the ceilings on these cupboards all the way around once I've got them on I can then put the light fittings in run the wires in and then board the rest of it I've got to be able to put these on first and get these wired in now before I panel it because otherwise I'm not going to be able to access behind it and run all the cables. Once it's panelled, it's all boarded in, you'll never see it again. So, it's time to get a few panels in here. I've got some plasterboard for this and I'm going to use the clean edges coming forward every time. That way we've got a nice edge to work to when I use the filler later on. And then we'll be ready to fit the lights. So it was on with marking, cutting, and snapping the board ready to fit. I'm using 3.5, 45 mil long plasterboard screws for this. These wind in really good and they're designed for this job. Right, so I've boarded now all of my different places and I've got my lights in as well. I cut these with a tiny little plasterboard saw that I bought and I've wired them up there as you can see. We're using one mil uh just one mil twin for this it's all low voltage so that should be plenty good enough for that i'm going to tape all of these joints and then i can get on with boarding the front of these so there we go they're all paneled in now nicely and now i'm on to these yes the finishing panels on the front we're going to get these on now i've done the two side ones now we're going to do these ones across the top and across the bottom I've also boarded in all of this stuff in here all nice all the way around I've got my wires all through hidden away in this tiny little corner down here I need to tidy up this bit but we're coming along nicely now it's really starting to take shape come on oh the lights are on too look <laughs> pink to make the boys wink girls wink 
<laughs> so now we're at this stage, but there's still so much more to do. I've got to fill all of the joints on the walls here. I've got to rub them all down. And of course, I'm going to put mirrors in the back of each of these panels. So when the light shines down, it really reflects and really pings out to give it that extra pizzazz. I've written down all my sizes now for my mirrors, numbered them one to six. So I'll get the guy to number the glass pieces or the mirrored pieces one to six. There are only a couple of millimetres difference between each of them. So I haven't done a bad job of keeping these cupboards or shelves symmetrical. So it was off to Kent Blackswells to get my glass sorted. The guy was cutting it just the same as what I was doing with the plasterboard. But this time it was with mirrors. So I'm back now and I have my mirrors. All six pieces. Thank you very much to the guy at Kent Blacksalls for cutting them for me. I also bought some mirror adhesive so to make sure that I'm using the right stuff to stick these on the wall because I don't want them falling off, do I? <laughs> He's numbered each piece for me so I know exactly where it's going to go. So starting with number six, which is the bottom right one here, let's get this one on the wall. I've actually put these on the carpet this time because I know it's probably the safest place for it to go. I'm going to get a big splodge of this on the corners and just do a little line like this all the way around the outside. And that should stick this bad boy on there perfectly. All the way around, a big X in the middle. And that should hold that on there a treat. So here we go. Fingers crossed. We're right in there. Is it gonna fit? Oh wow, look at that. That fits like a co-op t-shirt. Wow. So five more to go. Let's get them all in and I'll let you know if there's any problems. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right, so I've had one problem. I can't get one of them in. Well, number two, I can't get in. I've got in number six, five, four, and number three, they went really easy, but this one was more difficult. It just feels a little bit too wide. So, I've just whipped off the side panel there. Then we'll see if we can get this one in. Once the mirror's in, I'll then screw the side panel back in again. Fingers crossed, this will be the answer to the problem I've got right now. <laughs> Need I say any more? She's in the hole, baby. Let's screw this panel back on here. Where there's a will, there's a way. Come on. See this face? This is happy face. Because they all fit. Come on. They all fit. Only one had that little adjustment where I had to take the side panel off, but they've all fit in there, snug as a bug in a rug. The happy face is staying on. Come on! And as I fitted a fireplace in here, this might be a brilliant idea. Now I've spent a hell of a lot of money doing this place up. And what better way to protect it than with a fire alarm? So I've teamed up with Xsense to help prevent fire in the home. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to open this box, a fire alarm system from Xsense, and show you exactly how to fit it. Because if you buy one, you're going to need to know. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. This is their latest product, the Link Pro Smoke Alarm with Base Station. And in the box you get one one base station, three sensors, and the screws, and the power lead, and that is the base. That's one of the bases there, right. Also, you get the instructions. So, this looks like it should be fairly easy to fit. It's all wireless, so that's a bonus. First of all, I'm going to plug in the base station into the wall and link it to the Wi-Fi. Right, now that's plugged in the wall, I'm going to download the app here. I'm on Google Play, so this is what I'll be using, but the Apple Store's there as well. Just use your phone, scan the QR code, and that will take you straight to the app. Download it, and you're away. 
So there we go, there's my base station there all linked up. I've got a little table coming for this corner, so I'm just gonna have it sat on that little table, but for now I'm just gonna pop it on the floor and it'll stay there for the moment. Right, so I want one of these over by my computer area because there's a lot of wires that are involved with computers, so the chance for an electrical fire are very minimal because I've wired it very well, but there is a chance. So if there's a fire near my computer, I want it to go off straight away. Also, I've got a fireplace in here, so we're gonna get it up fairly central to the room, but slightly edging towards this computer area. So we're gonna jump up on my hop up, get open to the ceiling here, stick it on. We've got this round bracket here, I've got a pencil. Just gonna put it on the ceiling, mark the holes. One, two, three and four. Easy as that. Now grab my combi drill and drill the holes. Now I'm gonna insert the four raw plugs that come provided into the holes. And now screw it on to the ceiling. I'm now gonna set the location with the location button on the back. Living room, location set. Living Press room. the location button again to change the set location. There we go, I want it in the living room. This is where it is, so that's what we're set on. So let's pop it onto the ceiling. You literally now push it on and give it a twist and that should stay up there. There we go. Detector has been mounted. I'm now gonna do exactly the same. One in the kitchen and one in my bedroom. Starting with the bedroom. It's now asked me to pair my device. Want to connect to another network? Yes, we do. Let's have a little look. You gotta press the button on the back of the base station. Started flashing. Confirm operation. Next. It's told me I'm all connected now. So we're away. Right, so my second one, I wanna put in the master bedroom. So I'll go through the locations. Press the location button again to change the set location. Press the location button for the next location. Quickly press the location button twice for the last location. Hold down the location button to save the location. There we go, so I'm gonna go through them now. Entryway. Not the entryway. Basement. Nope. Living room. Nope, we've got one in the living room. Dining room. No dining room. Kitchen. Not in the kitchen. Hallway. Not in the hallway. Master bedroom. That's the one, so hold it down. Master bedroom. Location saved. As easy as that. So that's where we're going with this one. I'm gonna plug this now into the bracket I put on the ceiling in my bedroom. And then that one will be set as well. And finally, the last one is gonna go in the kitchen. Just to show you what you do with the batteries here, you take the little clip out, there's a little tab in the back. You pull that little plastic tab out, put the battery back in. Make sure the red tab is pushed down with the battery. There we go, it's in. Hello from XSense. Location not set. Press the location button to select a location. We're gonna put this one in the kitchen. Living room. Dining room. Kitchen. That's the one, hold it in. Kitchen, location saved. And that's where this one's going, in the kitchen. It couldn't be easier. So there we go, one in the lounge. One on the kitchen and one in my bedroom. You can share the device with your friends and family so everyone will be informed if there's a fire. There's also alerts for low battery, for faults and anything like that. It's got a child friendly voice and a do not disturb night mode. And of course, it will alert you if there is a fire. So that's my home, absolutely protected from fire. If there's any sort of fire issue in this house now, one of these detectors is gonna pick it up and I'm gonna be alerted on my phone. 
for all thanks to the Xsense smoke alarm system. If you want to get your hands on one of these Xsense smoke alarm systems, all you've got to do is hit the link that is pinned to the top of the comments or check the description and there'll be a link there for them. And if you hit the discount code Xsense WSA, you'll get 10% off. So don't waste any time. Get your Xsense Pro Smoke Alarm today. It could save your life. Thanks a lot, Xsense. Right, so the next thing is to start filling this and rubbing it all down and getting it prepped for paintwork. So there we go, that's all the filling done. I've covered up every single one of the screw heads everywhere, all filled. So I've just got to let, wait for that filler now to go off and then we'll be able to give it a good rub down. Obviously I'm gonna go around the mirrors with some silicon uh, or cork or something out of a tube once it's been painted to get, make sure that's nice and neat. Give them a nice little finish around there. But I'm not looking forward to the rubbing down part. It's gonna get very dusty in here, so I'm gonna to have to make sure everything's covered up because there's no calories in dust. One thing I am gonna be doing is leaving these screws. Although I'm gonna paint it, I'm gonna leave these screws in this panel, just this one panel. I'm gonna put little white caps over them because if I ever need to access behind this panel, the electrics are coming straight through there. So that's what, it's gonna be my secret access panel, just behind the telly, so no one knows it's there other than me. And it's just gonna have little white caps over the, over the black head screws there. So if I ever, ever need to get in there, I've got an entrance. So I'm done rubbing down now. I've rubbed everything down. It's all pretty smooth everywhere. I've got rid of all the heads of all the screws and everything. So now it's time for some paint. And I've chose this dark gray color. So it should be really nice. Let's have a look. How about that? Not a bad color. I think that's gonna go really well. So it's too late now. <laughs> that's what I'm having. It's on the wall. Let's go. I'm gonna give it two coats and hopefully that'll look really nice. So there we have it, all painted, all looking good. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with what I've done here, you know. For an old bricklayer who doesn't know anything about chippy work or anything like that, I don't think this has turned out half bad. What are we saying? Marks out of 10 in the comments as always. And this is what it looks like in the dark. We can change the colours of the fireplace. We can change the colours of the lights. Yellow, orange, blue, pink. Or we can put them on a system so they just all change around and go random colours. Just like the outsides are on at the moment. I'm absolutely over the moon with it. If you like the Tricky King merch, I've also got the caps in stock and there's links to more of the merch on my merch page, so please check that out. Also, don't forget, if you're interested in the fire alarm system, there is a money off code, 10% off, and the code is XSense WSA. And obviously, there's links for that in the description, so please, if you want one of their fire alarms, take advantage of that discount code. So you're probably wondering how much this cost. Well, I can break it down for you. The timber was £125. The panels were £300. The panels behind me here. The mirrors were £180. The plasterboard was £60. The screws were £30. The fireplace was £230. The LED lights came in at £40. And the paint and the filler came in at £35. To be a grand total of exactly £1,000. I really, really, really have enjoyed making this video, guys and girls. If you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one, where we'll be doing some brickwork of a little bit different than what I normally do. Cheers, guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Peace out, and pow. I went to a hidden tiki bar this weekend, and it was... Huh?